Battle after battle. War after war. Skirmish after skirmish. While they may be totally accurate, we're always left asking one question. Who is the best warrior? Well, today, we find out. In the tournament! What's up guys and welcome back to Totally Accurate Battle Simulator. So last time you guys seemed to really enjoy the video that I made of Gary the Gladiator and the Arena Challenge, so I wanted to do something similar, but not the same. I didn't want to make the exact same video again like a lot of people requested, so today we are going to be having a tournament. Single elimination, to the death, every single unit to see who the best unit in tabs is. Now the way that this is going to work is every single unit has been randomly distributed in this tournament bracket and we're just going to follow this bracket all the way until a victor is decided. And the cheaper units are going to be rounded up to the same cost as the more expensive units. That way it's a level playing field. Some people will have quality, some people will have quantity, but in the end they would have cost the same amount in the campaign and that's kind of how I value units I guess. But before we begin I want to hear from you guys. Leave a comment letting me know, don't cheat, don't go to the end. No looking forward, who do you think is the best unit? Who do you think is going to win? Because for me, I think it's the Viking. You know, I'm a big fan of the Vikings, their wiliness and the fact that they have two weapons. They're a little bit expensive, so they might not be able to beat a really cheap unit if they get matched up against them, but I got a lot of faith. May the tournament begin! Boxers versus Archers. This is what I was talking about with quality versus quantity. They cost the same, and the archers have quality, but they need to land every single shot because there are so many boxers. No, they're gonna make the distance. Oh god, it's already gone downhill. Oh, miss, miss, miss. Was that, was that friendly fire? We need to see that again. This archer just has flawless technique. You're gonna see him dodge at least three or four haymakers, and it gets to the point where his teammates are so fed up with it, they literally break his spine. That's not cool. Boxers, move on to round two. Peasants versus Ballista. I never actually thought that the peasants might be able to be contestants in this tournament, but there are so freaking many of them. Every single unit costs so much more than them that they they definitely, I mean, this ballista just doesn't stand a chance, right? They, oh, well, you know what? They might actually, they might line up just right. <laughs> okay, well, heavy casualties, but red victory. The mindless horde mentality of the peasants really comes into effect here when they line up like geese in front of this shot. But you know what? Some sacrifices need to be made for victory. Peasants move on to round two. Muskets versus Chicken Man Man. This could be close. I think that the Chicken Man Man can go really far, but he has a huge disadvantage in costing 5,000. You can get a pretty big army of any other unit to go against him, so his, oh, that's a whole lot of dick shots. The muskets have the numbers, they have the willingness, and they have their eyes set on the scrotum of that giant. Some people would call that bad form unsportsmanship, but in the end, they're moving on. And the muskets move on to round two. Barbarians versus farmers. We finally have our first even battle. This is gonna come down to skill and to armament because, oh, because the clubs might not get the job done. I'm a big fan of the tritons. Oh, 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 okay. Well then, it looks like it's, oh, oh no. Oh no, they've screwed up. The barbarian could really take advantage of this. He failed to do so though. 
The Barbarian really had a moment to take advantage of here. Wires got crossed on the farmer's side. I don't know how this ends up happening. They just started hoedowning in the battlefield for some reason, but he just couldn't swing around. Turning radius with that club is just too wide. And the farmers move on to round two. Poachers versus Chicken Man. That is so many poachers! At this point, their accuracy doesn't even matter. Their accuracy is not very good here, but does anybody want any shish kebab chicken? Oh my god, that poor chicken man. That was a disaster. They're just too expensive. This is the face of a man who knows he made mistakes. Poachers move on to round two. Footman versus Samurai. This is one that I really wanted to see in this tournament. It's a complete toss-up. It's gonna come down to who can swing the fastest, the pointy sword or the slashy sword. Oh, two versus one, one versus one. We got ourselves a showdown here, folks. Who's gonna swing first? The samurai takes it down. It's like I said, this entirely comes down to who can swing first. And in some cases, the footman can stab before the samurai can swing. But in the end, the samurai are just too quick. And the samurai move on to round two. Spearmen versus Vikings. I don't feel good about this for the Vikings. This is not a matchup that they wanted. Oh no. Oh, one Spearman takes down another one. It's a one-on-one. -on -one. He has the range and he also has the turning radius by the looks of it. The Viking needs to get his shield around or else he's gonna get an armpit full of spear. The Vikings are eliminated. There aren't many units that the Vikings will match up badly against, but the Spearmen and their extremely long range, their ability to get around shields and up underneath that raised axe, it was just too much. Spearmen move on to round two. Cannons versus chariots. Don't blink or you're gonna miss this one, guys. It's gonna come down to a cannon shot or a miss, and that's a miss. Chariot victory. This is completely unexpected of a horse to charge headfirst into the barrel of a cannon. I think we're gonna have to look up this horse's medical history. There's something strange here. And the chariot moves on to round two. Shields versus catapults. Bowling anybody? They may have wanted to take a bit of a different formation. Oh God. <laughs> That, that looked painful. They naturally want to form a phalanx, you know, they want to protect everybody with their shields, but that is just a mistake against these opponents, right? That has to be, oh, we're starting to see a little friendly fire from the catapults, though they should have this in the bag as long as they don't manage to kill each other. We just lost a catapult to friendly fire. We just lost a second catapult to friendly fire. The shieldmen may be geniuses. Oh, I can't believe this is happening right now. There is just a serious communication collapse on the side of the catapult team. We have one shieldman going around the back. He seems to be going for the heart of the catapult and he's down. Two shieldmen versus one catapult left. I don't know how this can go well for the catapult at this point. Actually, we're the shieldmen, right? I don't think either of them have the ability to kill the other. Whoop, well, maybe the shieldman's coming in from behind. Is he gonna bonk him? Give, just give him a little bonk. There you go. There. Oh boy. Oh, he shook him off. Oh my God. We might be in for a wild ride, kids. Buckle up. We're gonna be here a while. Uh huh. Disqualified, you say? Purposely delaying the tournament, you say? A lack of willingness to actually fight to the death. I understand. Well, you've heard it here first, folks. Both contestants have been disqualified. That, that was already taken into account in the tournament bracket. Because it's really awkward to try to make a bracket with nine fights instead of eight. This might have been staged the whole time. No, I don't, I don't believe it. Disqualified. Round two. Peasants versus muskets. Our first match of round two, and I gotta say, the peasants are getting matched up pretty well because there is just no goddamn way that the muskets are gonna take down all of these guys, right? I would be surprised if they could take down three peasants. I mean, they got a few, but they they don't have bayonets. Bayonets would be really handy right now, right? Is this guy, no, you, you see, he thinks he has a bayonet. <laughs> You're gonna get pushed off the world, idiot. Take a shot. Oh my God, this dog, oh, there you go get silly fisted in the end, just like the rest of them. 
If the peasants continue to use this mindless horde mentality to their advantage, they're gonna go far. This musket really did not stand a chance. He delayed as best as he could, but he knew in the end he had to take a silly fisting rather than getting pushed off the edge of the world. Peasants move on to the semifinals. Round two, boxers versus farmers. Four versus three is a pretty even fight. I had fully expected that the boxers were gonna have a significant advantage in numbers going through this. And it looks like we have a dog pile. We have anybody coming out on top. We have oh, only one farmer left, but he is dodging fists left and right, left and right. Oh my God, he gets tagged on the chin, but he takes them down. He takes them both down. The farmers move on. This once again came down to the flawless execution of head movement from the opponent of a boxer. Last time we saw it in the archer, they couldn't follow through in the end, but the three points of the farmer will. Farmers move on to the semifinals. Round two, poachers versus samurai. This is gonna entirely come down to accuracy. We've already seen the poachers miss the chicken man a lot, so they need to hit every other shot at least, and they seem to be doing it. We have a couple of porcupine samurai. They're managing to close the distance, but it's just too much. There's just too many arrows. They take him down. Look at the shots in that samurai. The poachers may have poor accuracy, but they're still landing a lot of their shots, and a lot of very important shots. Look at all the head shots on this guy. He had absolutely no chance. Poachers move on to the semifinals. Round two, Spearman versus Chariot. This is a really unpredictable one because the Chariot is just wild. You have no idea when it's gonna go down. Look, he just caught two spears directly in the driver. It did not matter. And these spearmen just have such poor turning radiuses. They turn and oh God, they get tied up in each other. They kill each other. Oh my god, the chariot might actually be able to take this down. There's only two spearmen left. They're not gonna go down without a fight though. They need to actually turn to try to make it so that they each don't have to turn anymore. They need to be facing opposite directions to be prepared. But instead they're just caught in this constant spin. There goes another one. One spearman left. The chariot might take this down. Ooh! He's not gonna go down without a fight though. Here he comes, a final rush. He jumped over it. He jumped over the connector. He needs to go for the horse here. This is coming right down to the wire. Come on, Spearman, I believe in you. Couldn't get there. Chariot moves on to ra- What's that? Yes? Okay. Are you sure? I understand, okay. It looks like the chariot has been disqualified for doping. They have found traces of illegal substances. The tournament organizers are very strict about this. Don't do drugs, kids, even if you're a horse. Spearmen move on to the semifinals. Semifinal, peasant versus farmer. For the first time, the peasants do not have a significant number advantage. It looks like it's about six versus three, and they're unarmed. This is gonna come down to how quickly the farmers can get rid of the peasants before they get silly fisted. They're getting tied up. Oh no, the farmers, two versus one, same odds. Double kill, a collateral. We need to see that again. Can safely say, I did not expect that. The farmer has three points on his trident for good reason. He gets an extra one for good measure because he takes down both of these peasants in one fell swoop. Semi-final, poacher versus spearman. Once again, it looks like the poachers are not at a significant number advantage. A lot of the quantity units have now been evened out and they're at a disadvantage in the later stages. They need to really hit all of their shots here. The spearmen are starting to make up some distance, but it's not enough. The spearmen have a long reach. As a melee unit, they probably had the best chance against the poacher, but it wasn't good enough. Final round, poachers versus farmers. For the grand final, we have gone with a giant battle. Still even numbers, but this is again gonna come down to the accuracy of the poachers. They've not missed so far, but they really seem to be missing now. The farmers are taking it on the chin and then giving it out. They've closed the distance. They're starting to loop around. Oh my God, this is a disaster for the poachers. They've come so far, but it might not be over yet. It looks like the farmers are starting to kind of clog up on each other. They formed a bit of a hoedown. There is but one poacher left and the hoedown is moving on. It's a hoedown, it's a hootenanny, it's a hoedown. Farmers win.
The poachers have really proven throughout this tournament that when they need the accuracy, they can have it, but in the final round, they really choked. Look at all these arrows just flying past the ranks of the farmers, and in the end, a lot of these shots aren't making a difference. These farmers aren't falling. They're managing to close the distance, and as soon as they do, the hoedown starts, the hootenanny starts, and the final poacher falls. Congratulations to the farmers, and it's funny because I'm pretty sure I've heard of other YouTubers doing a similar tournament style thing, probably not to this dramatic extent, but even then, I've heard of farmers winning as well. They're apparently a really, really strong unit because they cost so little, but they are armed. You know, when you have the barbarian and the boxer and the peasant, they don't actually have a weapon, which is a big difference, but I think that's gonna be it for this episode of Totally Accurate Battle Simulator. Guys, were you right? Did you guess, Farmer? I would say a lot of people did, but this was a lot of fun. My voice is absolutely killing me from that stupid announcer voice. But I love making these videos. I want to play more tabs. I absolutely will when there's an update. But until then, I'm going to have to wait until I come up with another original idea. So as always, if you guys have any ideas for what you want to see, be sure to leave them in the comments, and maybe I'll play it again soon. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.